One of the reasons why this Steam Deck is such a great device is because of its console-like experience. You know that when you want to leave the house, you take the Steam Deck with you, you press the power button, you pick up exactly where you left off five hours ago. That's like convenient, right? And then, you know, you want to play a different game, you just close it down, press A twice to play a different game. It's easy, it's like a console. If you're coming from a Windows handheld, you know what I'm talking about when I say that it's not that user friendly. And you kind of have to know what you're doing with Windows to have a good time. Cyber dopamine here. I put SteamOS on the Legion Go and the ROG Ally. And the way I did it is I used something called Bazite, which is an exact replica. It's a Linux distribution that replicates SteamOS to the T. And the experience has been incredible. How could I not make a video on this? How come other people aren't doing it either? This is amazing, okay? I'm gonna show you benchmark tests between Windows and Bazite. I'm gonna show you battery tests as well. And I'm just gonna show you the user experience and, and help you decide if it's worth it for you because this is really fun. Let me just give out a disclaimer real quick. I'm not this computer science engineer. I just wanted to dual boot and switch over to SteamOS to see what it's like, to see if it's worth it for other people. So if I say things wrong, I apologize. I'm just trying to do my best and I'm learning as I go. So what can you expect after installing Bazite onto your device? If you're coming from a Steam Deck, everything that you're used to on your Steam Deck is on here. And there's a few extra features if you actually go into the info bar I'll show you here. Um, you can actually configure a few settings, right? So for example, you go to performance, you can change the frame limit, um, variable refresh rate, TDP limit. The TDP limit doesn't actually work, so you're gonna have to go through um, simple decky TDP to actually mess with the watch. But as far as like features in the like settings go, configuring things, everything just works. And so when you install Bazite OS onto your device, you're gonna have to download Decky Loader, um, which is like a plugin. And then you have to download plugins for Decky Loader. So basically you've got simple decky TDP, which allows you to change the wattage of your device. If you wanna go low for better battery and less performance, have at it. You can go all the way up to your best performance. You can actually overclock it with this. Um, GPU frequency mode, um, power governors. You can have per game profiles. So for example, in The Witcher, I like to keep it at around 18 watts. So every time I turn it on, it instantly goes to 18 watts. Instead of me having to be in turbo mode and switching it back down to performance and not getting that sweet little middle sweet spot. Um, super useful stuff. And then if you go over to handheld Damien, you can change the colors of your RGB lights, you can change the gyro um, sensitivity and things like that. Um, of course, you've got CSS loader, you can change the theme of your device. Vibrant deck will turn up the saturation of your screen, which is always fun. Um, there's a lot of cool things you can do with this and everything just seems to work. One problem though I will come across is if I'm going from like 15 watts all the way up to the max, for this one I set it to 25 watts, um, I will get some stutters. So the frames will drop to around 14 frames per second. Somebody might know better than I on how to fix that, but if you do it slowly, um, for some reason it actually works pretty well. So I don't know what that is, but for me, you know, it's not a big deal at all. But one of my favorite things is that the fact that I can just press the power button, the device falls to sleep, and when I want to pick it back up, I press it again, and it instantly wakes back up and there are no problems with it. That is the craziest thing. It pauses the game for you. When you turn it back on, it picks it 30 watts so that it can have a good startup. Like it's super fast, it's snappy, it's reliable. You know, it is just a blessing to have coming from Windows. And that is priceless for so many of you that like to play on the go, right? Um, my Legion Go, I've been playing Witcher 3 and I haven't exited out of the game once in a full week. That's an amazing experience that you can't really get on Windows. Something always happens to where it force closes the game or something. Um, there's a couple of bugs that'll happen here and there. Um, you'll get this like BIOS bug where um, the, cap the fans can, will, will like, the custom fan curves might stop working out of the blue. So you'll feel your device heat up quite a bit. There's a fix for it. There's just a brand new update that came out today to help with that. 
Um, but I did run into some problems where we'd hit up to like 90 Celsius and then the fans would just shut off and so would the device. Now that's not the safest thing, right? Um, for the longevity of your, your device. But what I'll do is if I catch myself hitting those higher temperatures, I'll just turn on the full blast fan and then it just cools it down again. But you kind of do have to be aware of that. Um, as far as the update goes, it's fixed it, but I'm not gonna fully rely on it yet. The adaptive brightness sensor doesn't work. It's not working yet, at least. Um, so you're gonna have to always customize and turn up and down the brightness depending on this environment that you're at, which to me is not a big deal. It's also worth noting that um, if you're coming from a Steam Deck, you'll probably know that there's a lot of games that aren't compatible and or optimized. Um, you're gonna get those same limitations that you would get with the Steam Deck. So like I can't play Modern Warfare 2 on multiplayer, um, but that's where the blessing of dual booting comes in, right? Wherever you have limitations, you can break those chains in Windows just by dual booting and it takes you 15 seconds, you know? As far as things that like interrupt your play style and actually are in your face, there's really not much. <laughs> that sounds crazy. Mo pretty much everything works, but let's talk about the installation. Now this was a beast and a half of a river to cross. I spent maybe six hours installing it on the Legion Go and it took me four hours on the ROG Ally, okay? And the reason being is because again, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, but now that I figured it out, the install process with a good tutorial by your side will take about 30 to 40 minutes. So it does take a little minute to cross the river, but once you do, you have this really cool experience. I dual booted Steemo Bazite onto the device. So we've got Windows on half of the SSD and then we have Linux and SteamOS on the other side of the SSD. So I can easily go back and forth between Windows and Linux, which is great for a lot of you. That's probably the best case scenario, right? Maybe you wanna play some Xbox Game Pass games. Just boot back into Windows, no problem. Now you're traveling and you want that convenient, easy, ease of use, sleep, wake function and better battery. Just switch it back to Linux. If this video does well, I'll, I'll make a tutorial on both of them. It's actually very easy. It should take about 40 minutes if you do it right. So here we have um, a side-by-side -side comparison with Windows Elden Ring and SteamOS slash Bazite Elden Ring. Quick disclaimer, I'm not gonna be like having a full-on science project of specifications and frame rates. I'm just seeing like the general difference. So please don't get mad at me at this crappy benchmark test. It'll at least give us an idea, right? Let's take a look at the performance difference. So we had a 37 average FPS on the SteamOS on Bazite with 15 watts, okay? At, and we had a 50 frames per second, 50 and 60 frames per second at 30 watts on Bazite. With Windows, we got 15 frames per second on balance mode, 15 watt with the Legion Go. And then of course on performance mode, um, 30 watts, we got 60 FPS. So as far as limiting your TDP goes, you're gonna see a little bit better performance based off my testing. Every game is different. And let's take a look over at The Witcher. So we've got 50 frames per second at 15 watts on Linux. And then we've got 40 frames per second at 15 watts on Windows. Now based off like the community, what I've read is that some games have better performance than Windows, some games don't. Now of course, Steam Deck is SteamOS is known for optimizing and using very little background tasks to make sure that you have a good fulfilled battery life. And so the big question is, can installing SteamOS on a Windows handheld give you better battery life? So I decided to run some tests and here we have the answers. So here we have Windows on the Legion Go, a full battery test from 100% down to zero. This is Witcher 3 at 15 watts low settings and as you can see here it is looking pretty good right wait till you see the other numbers from the other devices though Okay, so we've capped out. We're dead at one hour and 42 minutes. Now let's try the Steam Deck OLED to give you an idea. This just blew my mind.
So obviously this seems like OLED wins out. I mean, look how slowly the battery is dying in comparison to the Legion Go. Okay, here we have it at two hours and 12 minutes. Really good. That's awesome. Now let's try Bazite slash SteamOS on the Legion Go at 15 watts. Same settings. Here we go. I hate to say it, but it's one minute less than Windows in power saving mode. So I, I think it's just safe to say that in my testing alone, there is not much of a difference at all when it comes to battery performance. It could be different per game and it could be different per device. The ROG Ally might have a different result. I just don't have the time. I've already spent too many hours making this video. Should you consider getting Bazite for your device? I absolutely recommend it and the potential that Bazite has with future updates is incredible. I really wish we could all email the team and tell them how great they are doing what they're doing because seriously it completely changes the way I perceive these Windows handhelds. They're reliable now they feel like a reliable tune-up car cool. but the coolest thing ever is the fact that you can dual boot SteamOS and Windows so now you have the best of both worlds. This is an amazing experience. And so I had to make this video.